Okay. Oh, great. Okay, that's working too. I'll give it to Rotary so that she can send out. Okay. Um, so we usually start the meetings with a, a round table of introductions, but I'm going to start with the online people first to introduce themselves. And that way, if we miss anybody, we'll get them later. But uh, so I'll start with uh, Katie. Hi, good morning, guys. Um, wish I could be there in person. Unfortunately, my kids don't get on the bus until 9.15, so here I am. Uh, anyway, Katie, Golden Valley resident, Hopkins School Board member, which is why I'm here today to give you a quick update. Uh, local realtor, all sorts of other wonderful things. Um, good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you. Um, Tim. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm actually out taking a stroll around the neighborhood right now because our house is a little bit crazy as well. So um, I'm one of the owners of Forward Spine Center in Golden Valley. We're more of a natural spine care clinic. We offer chiropractic care, acupuncture, yoga, and rehabilitation. I'm happy to be on the call this morning. Well, oh, thank you for joining us, Tim. Matt. Uh, Matthew Aiken, uh, financial advisor with Tonka Financial Services, um, and uh, I am close to Golden Valley as a resident. I live on the other side of Theo Worth in Minneapolis, um, and I frequent uh, Golden Valley quite, uh, quite uh, a lot. So. Okay, we'll go around the table. Brent, we'll start with your side. Yeah, hi. I don't know where to look, so I apologize about that. Brent Pavia <laughs> with the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Good morning, Victoria Marley, also with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Hello, Sherry Gangler with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Michelle Swanson, Community Relations Manager for Excel Energy. Gary Aiken, uh, President of Tonka Financial and Chair of this committee, Rotarian, member of the Chamber, and uh, thank you for sharing this thing. So thank you everybody for coming. Good morning, I'm Mark Novinsky, I'm the Physical Development Director at the City of Golden Valley. Maurice Harris, Golden Valley City Council Member. And I'm Kevin Lytle with PRISM, the local food shelf thrift shop, and I'm filling in for Michelle Ness today. Thank you for bringing the owl, because I noticed it goes around against everybody's yeah. picture when they talk. It does, yeah. Yeah, so, so far it's, it's got points with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I don't think I, uh, it, do we have a speaker? That's what that's what oh, uh, Sherry and Victoria that's are right. here for. Okay, great, great. They've got a you presentation know. and everything. They're yes. really plus. They're putting me to shame, which <laughs> is nothing new. Mm -hmm. So I don't invite them every month. Okay. <laughs> and I just learned that at least Victoria's office is right across the hall, the, 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 the highway here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let's go. Then we have special guests from the chamber. Um, uh, I don't know all their background. I know Victoria's been with the chamber for a number of years, mm -hmm. and so. Tell us what you're all about, folks. And uh, Victoria's in for a nice surprise because I reordered the slides oh. last night. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it doesn't right. matter because we're going to roll with it because she will handle it. So um, hello, everyone, again. My name is Sherry Gangler. Um, I'm the VP of Talent and Finance. Or, no, Talent and Workforce. Do not put me on anything financial. <laughs> um, talent and Workforce for the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. Um, yeah, and I've been... Um, with the chamber for um, quite some time. I'll say it out loud, 2008 is when I started um, with the Minneapolis Regional Chamber. I've been there um, in numerous roles um, over the years and um, I'm just super excited um, to be working with Victoria on a lot of the great um, talent and workforce programming that we're doing. So that is me. And of course, um, Victoria Marley, and yes, I came from Twin West, so many of you, or actually all of you here, and some of you there are all familiar faces, and it's great to see you again. Um, yes, I've been at the Chamber for Twin West starting in 05, so yes. Yeah, fun fact, we worked on a I, young professionals yes. program together, like in 2008 as a joint chamber. Yeah, so it was so them. fun to be, <laughs> be back together again. So. <laughs> It, uh, the chamber's a great place to be. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, so I'm thrilled to be uh, working in the workforce division and um, have lots of uh, programs that we started at Twin West uh, now incorporated here um, through the Minneapolis Regional Chamber so we can make, grow them and make them even bigger and better than they were uh, back at Twin West. So, love to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, should I try sharing the screen here? Sure. And finding. And I guess just to preface, like, yes, we have a PowerPoint presentation, but we really want this to be kind of interactive and to get all of your thoughts. Um, you know, workforce is, you know, A, it touches everything that we do at the chamber. It's an overarching um, component of all of the work that we do. And, and I know that right now, especially, it's also um, something that is a major challenge for our employers, our member investors, and the people in our communities. So really want to kind of have this be a conversation. So those online, please feel free to, to pipe in. Um, I think what Victoria and I hope to do is just sort of give you a really brief overview, and Brent's going to keep us on track of, of kind of some what are some of the core components of the work that we're doing and the initiatives that we have, and then also looking at ways that um, you all can engage um, and be part of that, but but also to kind of help us shape and inform. You know, obviously, schools and governments and nonprofits are, and businesses are all an integral piece to this um, to to this work. So, want to kind of get all of your insights. Um, so as I kind of think about the different types of work that we do um, with our talent and workforce initiatives, um, I think we're always looking at obviously what are the current challenges that businesses are, are um, having right now and what can we do um, as a chamber to help alleviate some of that or to rise to the occasion to meet those um, challenges. Um, we're also really looking at ways that we can um, help bring up future talent and make sure that it is um, aligned that the skill sets of our future talent are aligned with what businesses need um, and also that they have access to understanding what are all of the options that they have from a career perspective and then finally the partnership and alignment so what can we do to help make sure that not only are we bringing along future talent but that that it is it's the skill set it's the workforce of the future um, that our region is going to need to be successful and our businesses need to be successful so and how I look at it. So I just was having some fun last night. I'm sorry, Victoria, I changed it up on you. But I, I feel like all we see are like headlines, right? Like of all of the challenges. So for current workforce challenges, these were just two that came up pretty, pretty easily. Probably not a surprise to anyone in this room. Um, this is from last week, the Business Journal. Minnesota has twice as many job openings as job seekers. So, um, and then, you know, jobless rates fall to lowest in more than 20 years. So we are 100% in a deficit of workers. Um, I'm not sure how many of you in your organizations have have job openings, places that you're going to fill. Hello over there. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so, you know, I think when we look at current talent situations, um, you know, what we look to do is a couple of things, but, but something that we're really you know, focusing on is helping employers uh, really consider all of the options in terms of their talent pools um, and doing that in a way that brings forward maybe um, some of the, the hidden talent market. So um, people who were formerly incarcerated that, you know, maybe through some previous practices were not taken through all the way through the interview process. Like what can we do to help businesses reevaluate their um, hiring practices to make sure that those individuals aren't immediately eliminated from the process because they're there um, and they're excellent workers and they're um, people that have paid their debt to society and are um, looking for um, employment and to be a great um, addition to, to the workforce. Um, we also look at um, providing hiring practices that are skills-based. So again, Maybe in the past, a company has always thought that, that a person to do this job needed a specific degree. Is that really the case? What is it that that degree brings? What are the skills that that, that individual doing that job needs to have? And can we rewrite the job description to more closely align with that? So we have a project currently with um, the Rework America Alliance that allows for um, businesses to go through a 12-week free cohort that helps them engage some of those um, skills baked based um, practices into their hiring practices so that they can um, kind of really redo their uh, their onboarding and make sure that they're bringing in all of the talent that's there. So those are just a couple of things. And actually, if you want to go back, Brent, this one. Um, so this is all kind of just the overview. So future talent, um, this was always one of my favorite 
That's two thirds of primary school children. And I actually think it's probably two thirds of even secondary and maybe even you know, high school students today. Uh, we'll hold jobs that don't exist yet, right? So how do we keep um, being really nimble, providing those skills and those socio-emotional um, learning pieces that are gonna help us um, connect our future talent with the jobs of the future? Um, there's a couple of things that we'll talk about in a few minutes that we're doing in those aspects and then go ahead, Brian. Then we have um, partnership and alignment. And so we have a lot of great partners, um, specifically in this region. Victoria is going to talk a lot to our partnership with the Hennepin West um, CTE programs, because um, we really do feel that um, you know CTE programs, especially career and technical education, is something that helps us create a workforce and or you know a career and college ready workforce. It provides a lot of the skill sets that are going to be important going into the future, things like technical skills, um, and critical thinking. Um, so, so that's a focus is really um, being able to support um, CTE programming in our, our region. So I don't even know what's next. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah. Sarah, there's Sarah. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Elevate Futures platform because it kind of crosses a lot of that. And then um, Victoria's going to dive a little bit more into our um, partnerships that we have with um, schools and educators in the area. Before I go on, I'm gonna just pause. Any questions, thoughts? I have a technical question. Technical uh, question. My slides are not moving on the uh, oh, no. remote access. I don't know if everybody's seen that or not. I'd like to ask everybody in the audience what slide they're on. Oh, I don't know. You know I slide two. Know. Slide two. I'm so glad I took a breath. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's weird. Why? And so is I'm still screen sharing. So how does? Uh, yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it's frozen. So I don't maybe refresh. Yeah, maybe just, maybe just stop and share. Yeah. Or would I knock everybody out of the? No, <laughs> we just stop screen sharing and oh, keep that in. Okay. Let's just try to share again. Yeah. Has anyone watched Moon Knight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. All right. How is it now, Are you seeing this one again, or are we on the right one? No, there. I see it now. We're good. Okay. Awesome. Well, we'll see if we stay, stay good. Right. Good. <laughs> Thanks, friend. <laughs> nice work, team. Um, so this is the homepage, or one of the homepages of our Elevate Features platform. So this is one of the tools that we use to kind of um, bring together all three of those initiatives. So this is um, okay. this is um, uh, a website that is geared to bring together kind of all of the pieces of the workforce ecosystem. So there are tools on here for employers. You can set up your own employee profile, your organization profile. You can post jobs. Um, you can um, show career explorers, what careers are associated with your work. You know, what we find a lot, um, and I'm sure those of you that also work with youth often hear is that, you know, they aren't even, they don't know what they are even. They're not aware of the careers that are out there and available to them. They only know what they either have seen other people in their lives have, or maybe that they've seen on um, TV or now I suppose YouTube. So there's not a lot of um, opportunity sometimes for them to see. And a lot of times, I know I don't even know, I've worked at the chamber as I mentioned for a long time and there's so many different pieces of every single job and every single industry that, you know, unless you're in that industry, you don't know that it exists or that it's an opportunity. So this site, um, students and anyone who's looking for a career or a job, can go onto the site for free, set up a profile, and there's all kinds of resources there for them. So they can watch videos, they can see what kind of learning or skill set is associated. There's actually online learning on the platform, so they can take a couple of online free um, kind of little um, courses that then they can see if it's something that they're interested in. Um, and so there's a whole lot of resources on the site that are free to students and those who are maybe just curious about careers and what it entails. So Sherry, quick yeah. question. So mm -hmm. is 
So students being high school and younger, right? Mm -hmm. College grads probably aren't going to go to this. They could, they could, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So it's, um, it's pretty much, it's set up for age 25 and under, or for those individuals who are maybe uh, not utilizing their skills. So maybe they're in a job where they feel like, you know, maybe um, they're not making a living wage. They wanna increase their skills. It's a great way to kind of see like, what's a career that's associated with what I'm doing. Um, that could then give me that kind of earn and learn potential. So, Thank so yeah. Oh, that's a great question, Michelle. Um, so this is um, a fantastic tool that we're really excited to have more use of it in the market. Um, the great thing about it too is with um, educators that as businesses set up their accounts, they're able to indicate if they're interested or willing to participate in skills in um, volunteerism. So they can say, I'm interested in being a guest speaker, I'm interested in um, being a mentor, or I have an internship. Um, and then educators can actually go through and say, I'm looking for a speaker in this industry, and it helps make that match. They can reach out directly to that um, professional to say, hey, I have a, a group of students that's interested in, you know, um, CNC, can they come in and see, or can you come and talk to us about it? And so um, it's trying to help kind of um, connect those, those areas. So um, that is something, and we're always happy to, um, to do demos or help people get logged on. But if you go to elevatefutures.com, and I think it's usually pretty self-explanatory, you can just sign up. It kind of says, are you a, a business or an individual or an educator? And it kind of helps walk you through that process there. All right. Did it advance? Oh, yes, it did. Okay. <laughs> uh, question. Yeah. Um, so this is within the chamber. I, I think it's a great idea, great resource, mm -hmm. but how are we getting it out to the schools and to businesses and so forth that so they know about yeah. this particular website? That's a great, great question. You know, how do you so, promote that? I'm, maybe I'm just, I'll, yeah. Maybe today I can it's all about, you got all this great stuff. With, I know. It's like having a great party and don't invite anybody. It's like, yeah. how, how do you get the invite? So, well, and and before um, Victoria kind of talks a little bit more about some of the partnerships that we have with some of our local schools, um, we need to do a better job of that. I mean, that's I guess the the end of it. But marketing it, we promote it out through our member businesses. Um, but in terms of getting it out to kind of the broader public, we've done a lot of. Um, outreach kind of one-on-one -on -one to different school districts, but we haven't done kind of mass mm -hmm. marketing campaigns. And so that's, I would say that's kind of next phase. That's why I understand this connects business with a lot of other communities that are probably unaware that what the business has to offer and so forth. I think that's great. Because yeah. I would say that two thirds of future employer, uh, employees have no idea what the business is doing, what those jobs look like. Mm -hmm. uh, so it goes both ways. Yeah. So that's a very, very good tool. So yeah. all members should get on here and yes. talk about their business. <laughs> yeah, so I don't even have profile. to be members, Gary, just, but I appreciate yeah. the membership. Can we quote that and be like, yeah. Gary says. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Encourage all you yes. um, chamber members, get on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and if you can get the educators to go there, because I see there's always a big disconnect between education and business in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, at the heart of, all of the work that you know Victoria does and that we do for the initiatives is that connection, right? It's bringing business um, to to students and educators and helping bridge that gap because they sometimes just exist in different systems, and so it is. It's really important to to bring those two worlds together. So. And so, as we see here, these are the programs that we do this work. Um, we partner as what Twin West started with our Hennepin West Consortium. Those are the 10 school districts uh, here on the western suburbs and two colleges. That includes uh, Boisetta, Minnetonka, St. Louis Park, uh, Hopkins, uh, Lionsgate, Brooklyn Center, uh, Robbinsdale, uh, Independent School District 287, um, Lion did I say Lionsgate? Mm -hmm. um, you do this so well. I know, I'm so like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed one here. Um, and then the two colleges are uh, Hennepin Tech and North Hennepin. So that is the uh, consortium that we do most of this programming. But you see here also we have the future, Bloomington Future Leaders, and that is um, programming that we do with um, Bloomington School Districts as well. 
that I'll highlight here. Um, our teacher externship program, our educator externship program um, will be kicking off um, again this year, um, this summer, uh, August 1 through 4. And I know that um, <laughs> PRISM has been a host for us for a number of years. Um, that's where we bring teachers into businesses and we get to experience firsthand um, learning what the business does and some of the challenges that it's having and what employees they're hiring for and looking for and what skills and all those things that um, you know teachers don't get to do normally. So this is what they uh, get to experience firsthand and they write lesson plans after their experiences and then bring them back to the students in the fall. So it's uh, a great way to have that um, just that energy um, that they can really talk about with their personal experiences and um, opportunities. I, if you don't mind, I just want to yes, jump please. in. We had two teachers come in yes, for from um, uh, Osseo. From mm -hmm. Osseo. And, oh, that's uh, the other school. We had, <laughs> there we go. We had uh, Nolan Isaacson, who's our manager of, of volunteerism at PRISM, and I do a presentation. And what we learned from the teachers is that when it comes to food insecurity for students, they they tend to buy food and keep it at their desk for the children that they know have food insecurity and will give that out to the students just to make sure they have something to eat in the morning in particular, but at any time. And that that to me just blew me away that this is this is what teachers do on their own. They have no budget for this. Yeah. yeah, out of their own pocket, just to make sure the kids have something to eat. Yeah, the, that experience was I mean, just huge. It was fun to hear them then in there, as I said, that they write these lesson plans and bring them back to their students. And that was one of the ones that they absolutely highlighted at the end of the experience was just how they learned that. Um, but it's, and that is what's really neat. It's like both the businesses and the educators get to really benefit from, from that program. So I think, I mean, just from that, it, it just, again, it highlights, you don't know what you don't know. We all know our daily routines and what we do. We don't know what other, you know, and so even, you know, I think one of the the educators that participated came back and they did, they gave a great presentation. They were just, they loved PRISM. They all wanted to come volunteer. Like it was a very, very um, cool experience, I think, for, for everyone. Um, and, you know, one of the educators was like, I learned that there's a job where people coordinate volunteers. I didn't know that existed until today. And so it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, when you're in a nonprofit world, you know, it's like, yes, that's kind of the standard. It's an obvious one. You know, yeah. but as somebody who works in a nonprofit, I don't know what a, a teacher goes through every day. So kind of that great, again, just, you know, kind of that getting into someone else's world for a day, the impact it has on us, and then also the impact that when we're able to bring students into those worlds, the impact it can have on those students. So, yeah. And it's, it's funny to me in a world where it feels like we overshare everything, but there's a lot that we don't share exactly. about our daily lives and the things that are just part of our, 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 our universes. Um, so to have the opportunity to really do a deep dive into somebody else's experience is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Especially since we coordinate to the teachers that are what they're, um, they're teaching so they go into those businesses that really fit with with their industry so they can see you know something that they've been teaching year after year and some of the basic high level fundamentals of these you know businesses like engineering or whatnot but to see that in action and to see what new equipment they're using and to see you know what new um, issues they're having it's it's one of those things that it's it's very exciting for the teachers for the students for the businesses so we're excited to, to have that again so if anyone's interested in being a host, I would love to love to get you incorporated. Um, our regional advisory board is our um, opportunity to uh, bring education and business together to um, both connect and to align curriculum and make sure that that's um, aligned with business industry needs and trends. Um, it's a great way to have those um, relationship building between the education and employers. Uh, it uh, keeps our curriculum uh, quality level up, uh, aligned with industry trends, and just to have that um, the opportunity to connect and to um, hopefully bring career connected learning opportunities for our students. And that happens a couple times a year, um, and just to be a resource uh, for them. So again, if you're interested in participating, I'd love to love to have you. We're growing that uh, that group. Our talent symposium is our. Uh, annual uh, big workforce uh, signature event that we do. Um, we bring education administrators, uh, community leaders, business leaders all together to just be aware of some of these workforce issues, but 
also to have time to, to discuss and kind of talk through some of these um, in a one day just event so that we can combine that and, and bring those uh, issues to the forefront. And then we also do some career expo um, opportunities. Um, and that is where we actually um, connect the students with the employers. Um, that's with their career exploration. Um, that would be like having um, some interviews, um, a day in the life of what you do, and just being that inspiration um, and connection to the students. Uh, we do that you know, through, both through our Elevate Futures platform, um, so you can have a recorded piece that lives on there, but also um, maybe that means going into the classroom and sharing um, maybe a financial um, lesson or um, what the practical pieces of what you do are. And so we do that throughout the year, um, and it's um, connecting specifically those business, or excuse me, the students with the employer so they can start growing their, uh, their network and being able to have those resources as well. So. Those are the main programs. And again, I would love to have you guys incorporated somehow um, into, into this work, so. You would think that Elevate Futures was all that the foundation, that would be full time. <laughs> but as they say on TV, but wait, there's more, <laughs> right? Right? Exactly. Um, just a couple other programs wanted to, to bring to your attention today before we, um, I'm sure we're way over our time. So I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, but I um, wanted to let you all know, so Leadership Twin Cities is a nine month program of civic engagement. Um, Michelle, I know you're very familiar with it. I've been in the program and I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so it um, takes uh, people from all different types of organizations, for-profit, non-profit government. Um, they're selected through an application process, and then it's a cohort of about 50, um, and they spend one day a month together, so you really do get to know the individuals. It's a great networking opportunity. And um, hear from, from speakers from throughout our communities that focus on different critical issues. So we'll examine, um, you know, education. We'll do a day on um, economic development, we'll do a day on public safety, health, um, health issues. Um, so um, just a really great program. And so those applications are open. They just opened a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're hosting a virtual session on May 17th, but there's lots of information on our website. I printed off flyers to bring and then left them on the printer. So my <laughs> apologies, but feel free to reach out either to leadership or to see us afterwards. And I'm happy to connect you with um, Zach Kramer, who's our colleague who um, runs that program. So. And if you want to visit to us electronically, we can put it oh. Oh, in perfect. the newsletters and we can check that oh. website. Yay. So. Oh, and Minnesota Keystone program. So that's another program that I get to work on. Uh, that is for Minnesota businesses that donate at least 2% of their pre-tax earnings. And that could be um, from cash or in-kind donations, but also um, in uh, pro bono services or even uh, volunteer uh, staff time hours. Um, and so that's a program that was started in 1976 um, by a couple of, um, a group of some of um, Minnesota's most iconic businesses and it's kind of evolved and grown. Uh, we're at uh, just under 200 businesses now. Um, but again, it's our way to promote and recognize and honor our businesses that are making such a great uh, impact in our community. And again, that you don't have to be a chamber member. So um, anyone um, across uh, the state of Minnesota that um, that qualifies for this, we'd love to hear from the program. And it's a really, um, we try to make it a really easy um, onboarding process for those companies as well. So, you know, I think we always say like, you know, oftentimes people will think, oh, 2%, that sounds like a lot. My guess is in a normal average business year, companies, you know, think about, you know, are you going to donate t-shirts? Are you going to, you know, all the things that a company does, it adds up really quickly. And so that, that can be things like, you know, pro bono work or in-kind donation um, in addition to, to, you know, cash donations. So, um, you know, it's a simple form. You try it out and see where you are. There's a giving form and you can find out if your company qualifies. So um, free to be part of that program. Um, and it really does tie back in, right? As we have fewer, um, candidates in the workforce and it's a more competitive workforce, you know, having that um, great, being a great place to work, having those initiatives that really ground your employees and, and help them feel, you know, proud and purposeful in the work that they do um, is a really important part of, um, of that culture and keeping people not only in our local companies, our local economy, but, but here in the state, tying them to our region. So, um, so it all ties together.
Thank you. Wow. Great job. Good good questions there, Sherry. <laughs> Victoria, great presentation. Great that we learn all about this. Super. Any other questions, anybody? I am impressed. You know, I didn't know the chamber had these secrets. <laughs> well, we and discovered them. Right. Okay. Thanks for having us. Twin West, I believe, started this sort of LA Futurama was on Cinemax mm -hmm. yeah. title or that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's been around for a, a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, at least maybe four or five years? Yeah, I was going to say, we, uh, it was first started in uh, 2017, um, and then we switched to the Elevate Futures um, platform in 2019. Okay, so, great. so, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of you know growing and, and getting bigger and better all the time. And focusing primarily on schools in the metro area, I'm assuming? Okay. Yes, yeah. Um, we can talk offline as well, but um, I had a few years of experience on the school board, so I can tell you kind of some of the organizations that if, if, if they're not on your radar are ready, that they should be as we okay. tap into educators and administrators. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to also um, highlight, because I think we are recording. Yes. Yeah. Um, the Rotary Club a couple weeks ago had a, had a presenter from Lithia's group, Dan Bomar, about the great resignation, oh, yeah. understanding and, and reacting. Um, and so much of what you said today integrates with what he was saying too about employees not necessarily leaving their jobs because of salary, but because of connection to mission exactly. and purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that that presentation is also recorded on our Rotary YouTube channel. I um, highly recommend taking 25 minutes out of your, your workday to watch that. Um, but you know, being able to also add this presentation so that other folks can see it in the community is, is going to be highly valuable as we're still we're just wrapping our head around what's, what's currently happening, why it's happening, and why didn't we see it coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. Great. Well, with that, we'll move on to our agenda. And I, I want to have uh, run more democratic with today. Do we want to start with the city or the schools? We always do the city first. I thought, well, maybe well, we change the, it the up. Same, you know, yeah, we, this was Elevate was all, you know, connecting the schools and education yeah, to business. Yeah, so Why don't we stick with schools? Kids are important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. I appreciate that. I'm going to write that. Out. School because I think it just kind of fits with this Elevate program and uh, maybe, you know, that would be a good way to go. So I'll start with Katie. Can we get Katie up on the screen by any chance? We'll get her up. Do, I, stopped okay. sharing, I was like, if I talk, do I bop up there? Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Everybody else does. Hold on, I'm going to get rid of this. I got to get the presentation on the way. All right. Here we have <laughs> All right. Good morning, guys. Um, so it's amazing, actually. We are kind of winding down our school year somehow or another. That happened our third school year since COVID, and where we don't understand how time works anymore. So I think I'm still a little bit surprised about that. Um, but in Hopkins right now, um, we've got quite a few things going on more at the board, I would say administrative level. Um, we are finalizing our budget using some of our ESSER and relief funding to really balance out some of our initiatives around student mental health and being able to move forward into our 22-23 school year feeling really, you know, we've really right-sized our budget. No additional cuts to positions or anything like that needed this year, which is a huge relief. Um, so things are looking really strong from a budget perspective. Um, we also did complete, and I can't remember if I mentioned this on the last one, and if I did, I apologize, but we did complete the renaming of our Lindbergh Center, which is our um, collaboration with the city of Minnetonka for the large athletic facility off of Hopkins High School. Um, that is now called Royals Athletic Center. Um, so that took place, um, I believe it was finalized at the beginning of April, but if I mentioned it last time, my apologies. Um, we do have uh, one of the 11 finalists for Teacher of the Year for the state of Minnesota is a Hopkins fifth grade teacher over at um, Gatewood Elementary. So Rachel Volkman, we're very proud of her and excited um, to have her as a finalist. And then um, we did receive a National School Board Association Award for our work with innovation and equity um, at Hopkins School. So really proud of that. 
And along that line, um, so much of what we're doing in the equity space is along um, creating policies that are going to drive the direction of our district. So what I would say from there is, you know, um, <clears throat> rate, uh, was it last school board meeting, we passed our gender equity and transgender gender fluid student rights policy. Um, we pass that as a school board, really protecting our children who don't conform to the traditional gender, um, traditional genders and allowing them a safe space to go to school, to learn and to be accepted. Um, we are discussing actually this afternoon, our racial equity policy, which has been a work in process for a long time, just making sure that we really get that right. Um, and, and it also focuses on reviewing every single policy we have as a district with an equity lens. Um, and I can tell you, being a member of our um, policy committee, it's, it's been a, a, a heavy lift, but we're really proud of, of where we're at with that right now. Um, and then on a um, kind of a, a little bit of a sadder note, we did um, lose an extended member of our Hopkins district. Um, for those of you that were aware of the murder of Dariana Davis in Columbia Heights, she was um, a former Hopkins student. Uh, so it was a traumatic experience for many of our sophomores um, who had relationships with Dariana. Um, but what it was interesting to see was the district really um, pull together all these resources and support our students in a time of trauma. Um, and so we had a ton of mental health resources, trauma resources step in to support our children and our students. And that was um, that was kind of a little bright spot in that in that tragedy for our students. So. That is pretty much all my updates. Thank you, Katie. Great update. Betsy. So if I talk over here, is that going to work? Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so Perfect Center for Arts Education um, has less than a month left of school. Our graduation is May 27th. But um, as Katie's probably the same for Hopkins, winding down while ramping up, because it always feels like that month of May is full, chock full of activities. Um, we've got a musical theater showcase next week. We've got a studio arts exhibition. We've got a two night dance concert. We've got a, a senior theater capstone event, um, a literary arts reading. So it's gonna be a wild day, full of students doing the, you know, doing their art, doing their passion, um, and then, and then you know, driving full speed into graduation at Ted Man on that, on that Friday afternoon. And we're thrilled to be back at Ted Man because we haven't been able to be, be there for a couple of years because of the pandemic. So that'll be fun for our, um, actually our high school principal has never had a normal graduation. His tenure at, at Perfect has been short relatively. We've never seen a, a real Perfect graduation. So that'll be great. So I would um, wholeheartedly welcome and invite all of our members of the community to, to join us in those celebration events. Um, they will be all on our website because we're open to the public. Um, and free. So come, come see some kids doing some really amazing things. And I can't remember if I mentioned last month, I can't remember when it became public, but we did just have a, a national silver, silver medalist through the Scholastic Arts competition. It's the highest award, the Scholastic Arts Medal. Um, it's the highest award of the, the, the high school student community for their art, their 2,000 students in, in the nation that receive the award. And so we have a silver medalist at Perfect uh, in Music Arts. So you guys can check out the box. And uh, we, will, we'll, we will not be calm in the summer. Um, as, a, as a professional development team of Perfect Center for Arts Education actually ramps up in the summer. So that us and we invite educators to either join us on campus or virtually to increase their education, their professional development in the arts. So we have at least two or three conferences happening on campus. Arts integration, a two day arts integration workshop, and then uh, a workshop in August um, um, around Native American art. Um, so that's actually um, the, the art standard in, in the state statute that you have to be teaching about Native American art in Minnesota and in the state of So that's one of the Perfect Center Arts um, Education Center provides for educators access to materials about Native American art. Questions for the school committee. Good. Well, winding down the year, and so yeah, at that point, uh, and so we, uh, 
traffic patterns have changed, everything else is about 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, city update. Gentlemen, who's going to go first? I'll go first. I can always tell. She's always there. Um, <laughs> it was quite a month, actually. Um, first off, the new chief will start May 2nd. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, and we have a search for an interesting process for all of us. Um, but we're excited for the start. Um, I'm sure it will be comfortable. We'll have to stop by here and visit for this month or two. So it will be a very, very intense couple of months just meeting everyone. The speaker um, coming up. The speaker, yeah, coming on the calendar. Um, we're at, so we're excited for the start. Um, and, you know, it's so open and get a lot forward. Um, other than it was a pretty quiet month on the city side. Last meeting we honored down down the valley, um, the proclamation of the 50th anniversary. Um, they have survived everything that has been changed that time, um, and still driving. Uh, great location in the valley. They're also in Crystal Lake. Um, so that's a great little for them to have. Um, as well as um, so we just did a bunch of appointments for commission boards. Um, Time of year, so we appoint a lot of people, but have some really great people to the commission. Um, the EI commission, the East Commission, so um, it's going pretty well. Run the Valley was last Saturday at Brookview Park, um, pretty decent crowd with one warm, nice day of the week. Um, apparently, Council Rainer Marriage got hailed on there again, so you know, you win some lose some, um, but it was a great event. Well attended, um, supporting our community uh, for the service commission and the local department of the Prison Prison um, with the support. So that's great as well. Um, one quick plug um, over at Staker Hope Bronx, so they're doing a Sobering Women in Business Expo on page 21st. Um, they're looking for vendors, I believe, and also you know, business to attend. Um, if you know any of Who are organizing that on Bonnie Bullwinch? So please let me know. May 21st, you can go back to celebrating the different businesses. Um, those are my highlights. It's a pretty quiet one, which it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure you have more information to add on to Mark. Um, <laughs> I suppose <laughs> maybe just on the development side, I mean, we talked about some of the projects in the past, and development does not move at the speed. Uh, so it, it takes kind of a long time to grind through processes and get everything uh, squared away. But um, a lot of activity, uh, Bone Valley Country Clubs uh, is selling off a few parcels. So we'll see some new development kind of happening in some extreme corners of unused land. The old Optum site, uh, even properties is still looking to bring about 400,000 square feet of um, office warehouse in that location. So again, kind of grinding through lots of technical uh, uh, details on that, um, and and just frankly, there's a lot of interest out there right now in a number of locations. So I'm sure, as always, uh, you know, we're we're kind of coming out of a bit of a I don't want to say a trough because we've been very very busy, but um, yeah, we're I, I can see the day where we're all just scrambling to get uh, everything done and everything to go at once. Um, construction side of things, we're doing some street reconstruction, finishing up in a couple of years. Now our payment management program will have re reconstructed just about every street in Golden Valley uh, at that time, and moving into what we call the IRP uh, uh, infrastructure renewal program. So continuing that work, but maybe with a little less intensity in, in a lot of regards. Um, Douglas Drive, uh, Drive uh, underpass is design phase. So Next fall, uh, or this fall, we hope to be bidding that and then starting construction in the spring of 2023. Um, still working on BRT on Highway 55, the uh, LRT light rail alignment, uh, new line extension was that route was decided, uh, I think that was announced last week. So using Lowry Avenue and, uh, and then connecting in at uh, Robbinsdale, kind of getting back. On its, its original design alignment. So um, there's some clarity on that. Uh, and 
then we're doing just uh, some, some significant flood mitigation work. We've been working on a big flood mitigation project over the, oh, probably the last 10, 10 years for sure. We've been very fortunate to get a lot of funding from the state and the DNR, um, and we're closely with the watershed, so kind of up in the north side of town. Um, you know, this series of projects that, that have to happen to uh, protect homes and businesses and infrastructure up in that, that area. So. Lots of work happening uh, on those fronts. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, I don't know if there's any other announcements we have. We probably have some rotary uh, updates. Yeah. Yeah. Rotary yeah. hat. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Betsy Anderson with the Golden Valley Rotary. <laughs> <laughs> and I invite you, local business owners, to contribute and be a part of our 2022 scholarship drive. Uh, we are looking to raise $5,000 uh, so that we can give out five $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors. Those graduating seniors would be from Robinsville Armstrong, Robinsville Armstrong High School, Hopkins High School, and Perfect Arts High School. Those are the high schools that um, serve or are in the city of Golden Valley that we support in our challenge. Um, the deadline, well, the, the soft deadline <laughs> to contribute is May 1st. So if you do feel like you want to make a contribution and you're getting a little bit close to that deadline as we are now on April 28th, I'm happy to drive to your location and pick up the check. <laughs> uh, or you can figure out a way to get that from your wallet card. So we would love to have your participation if you've ever been interested in supporting students but not quite sure how to navigate that process, don't want to go through all of the conversations with the high school to figure out what candidates for the concept or you'd like to have a tax deductible contribution, we are happy to partner with you to do that. That's the first one. How much yeah, are you trying to raise? Try to raise, trying to raise $5,000. Okay. We have about five $1,000. That's our, that's our normal pattern. Okay. Um, of course, that, that contribution level, that, that distribution level is self-imposed. You know, we decide that, so it's not required, but we, that's what we would like to do. But if we got more money? We would save it for next year. Okay. We would bank it. And then you make it grow. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Um, and interest rates are going up. Right, there you go. So yes, uh, we have our scholarship drive happening right now. Uh, we are working toward the chasing tour of Golden Valley, which will be on Thursday, July 28th. You may want to fact check me on that, I think that's right. <laughs> the last Thursday of the month, I think that's right. Um, and it'll be in you know, our downtown Golden Valley common area. Um, so look for more information about that coming because as a volunteer as part of the planning committee, we have an opportunity for that because you need not be a libertarian to be a part of that planning committee, but we would welcome you. And um, it all talks about what it means to be a libertarian. Happy to have that conversation. Uh, and then we will have some fun events happening in May. We're going to do some lawn bowling that will be open to the community. Where if the rotary is sponsoring, that's one of those dates we can say, oh, that one's not going to be my brain. But I'll give it to you. Uh, and I think we're having another one in June. So, some fun social opportunities to to uh, enjoy our, our community here in Golden Valley at Berkeley. Um, and meet Rotarians, learn about what it means to be a Rotarian in the city of Golden Valley, just like myself, you know, all that good stuff. Great. Anything else that I missed? I think you got it really well. Oh. You did a very good job. Thank you. Well, Betsy, you. Uh, Jog my memory. Yeah, we at the chamber also give out scholarships to our high school uh, seniors. <coughs> uh, we'll over $22,000 to our uh, legacy uh, Kennedy West Consortium members. So um, I think it's great. Um, again, if you would <laughs> love to donate, uh, we've got that, uh, that fund. And we give out scholarships to um, career technical education focused uh, students. So um, again, you know, looking at not just the high uh, flyers, the high achievers that probably will you know, leave our region here, but we uh, want to recognize uh, those who um, have access to these scholarships um, as much um, as um, other high academic achievement people, but um, would love to uh, um, be incorporated uh, into all the schools. Great. Anything else with the chamber that's coming up on the calendar? Yeah, I just would, I mean, this is the time of year where we, huh, I was gonna say, Hopefully, look at a legislative session that uh, ends and is productive, and everybody ends on time. But um, that normally doesn't happen. So um, 
you think with all this money and uh, opportunity that it would be easier, but it's not necessarily. So um, from the policy advocacy side, that work continues. I'm sure there will be programming um, along those lines, whether legislative breakfast or some other things. So if that's kind of in the house, um, check out our, our programming on that. We also um, have the Welcome Home Twins Luncheon. For those of you who don't know, we annually partner with uh, St. Paul Chamber. And um, when the twins are still looking like they could win everything because it's early in the season, uh, no, uh, it's really an opportunity for um, businesses and, and, and we're supposed to get together and celebrate the twins and welcome them to the new season. I'm not going to remember the date this year. It's on a Friday this year. Yeah, May 10th. Uh, no, it's no. the 13th the or 13th, 14th. 13th. It's fishing opener. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There Friday, you go. The so, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. It's a super better. fun event. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, fun if event. you're interested or if you know of, of people who might be sent to that, we'd love to have more people in person because the last couple of years, as everyone knows, it has been challenging. And I am looking out the window and I saw a couple of golfers out there. So it's that time of year too, where we have golf tournaments uh, coming up for the summer and some more of those kind of fun uh, types of uh, social networking type happy hour events as well. So look for those. And the only other thing I would mention is, as, as I've mentioned a few times, um, we're building out these West Metro membership meetings third Thursdays. Um, Talk to Mark afterwards, like to have a, a phone post one in Golden Valley. But if you are interested in uh, not only attending, but if you have ideas for topics or sites, uh, send them my way. Great. That sounds kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, thank you, Brent. Anybody else have any announcements? Oh, I do have one. Just a reminder Taste of the Burbs is May 19th, Thursday, May 19th, 6 30. Michelle didn't mention it. We're at eight different locations in the Western suburbs space is selling out so get your tickets now we still have tickets available at cinema grill in new hope where we were going to be featuring a sun uh sunday ice cream sunday bar and redmond's popcorn from the steve stephen colbert show fame <laughs> frankie's is going to be serving things that you won't normally find on their menu so can't possess his chefs to come up with two different entrees that you wouldn't find on their menu uh, Golden or Under Pressure, we still have tickets available at Under Pressure, and that's going to feature, of course, their craft brews. Well, it's the Golden Valley Roller. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Nice. Nice. So, uh, uh, and they will have for food, they'll have the big red wagon there. So, $40 per seat, 25 of the 40 is a donation to Prism. The rest of the $15 goes to defray the cost of the meal. So, Think about that on a Thursday night on May 19th. Well, and we have to thank you and Prism for our new guest that wasn't introduced today by everybody, but it's in the middle of the room. It's called an owl. Oh. <laughs> okay. And it has been, you know, working really hard trying to keep this meeting in focus. And I'm wondering if we can any feedback before we adjourn on the owl as far as some of the folks that are out there. So that you folks that are online with Zoom. Can you tell us how the owls work today as far as hearing? There are a lot of different tones and volumes and voices. I don't know how it came across. And I want to know what you think overall compared to past meetings. Any input? Silence. I would say that the um, the, uh, uh, the the video is great. Um, the audio is not so hot. I could barely hear a lot of... Um, Betsy's stuff, but also just in general, it was just soft, but it just sounds like everybody's in a big room, which you are. So, but that's why I call in on Zoom is because I can hear and see, I can hear and, and speak a little bit clearer on the phone. So. <laughs> Katie, what was your impact on this? Did you hear and see as good as you'd like to or not? Um, I can see you guys, which I loved. Uh, a little audio issue with Maurice and a little audio issue with Betsy, but I'm thinking it must be just that side of the room. Yeah. 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 We'll work on that. Does it operate on, so now it just turned towards me, so yeah. does it operate on whoever voice? Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah. And I'm, on the audio, I'm not a technical expert on this, but I'm not sure if we're if the audio is coming through your microphone on your laptop or if it's coming through the owl. So that may be the reason that this has yeah, the impact on the quality yeah. of the audio. Well, I know Victoria's got a very soft voice. So I was wondering how Victoria's voice came yeah, about. Yeah, I usually struggle with well that. Picked up. I think it probably is through my computer, and that's why her voice came through a little better. Uh, yeah. It's not my fault, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was quieter. She was definitely quieter, but there was clarity, whereas with Maurice and Betsy, things would cut out a little bit. Like, it wasn't picking anything up. Whereas with Victoria, yeah, she was quieter, but we had it all coming through, at least in my experience, so. It's probably great. Yep. Okay, well, thank you again for the experiment. We'll have to, you know, because we're looking for better technology to bring a better meeting together. So we're, uh, thank you very much, Prism, for this uh, opportunity to test this device. Because there's nothing else in the market like it. So it adds up, yeah. Well, the next meeting is, whoops, the fourth Thursday of May is? Thursday. I just like to donate. I noticed that. Yeah, twenty-six. I knew I'd get one right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll be at eight thirty, whatever that date is. Yeah. All right. But there'll be emails and so forth out. And so, uh, thank you for a great meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for a great presentation. Great lessons learned. Something at these meetings. Thank you, everybody, for participating online. And everybody have a great rest of your month and a great May coming up. See you in a month. Bye now. Thank you.